banks that defeat one Union County. So we also had basically uh, an alternate water source. So if you look today, uh, we have an alternate water source. So we were pumping in from two different directions. So if you remember the map earlier, we're pumping in from the east and west both. Uh, you know, if you ever think, stop and think, a lot of our water sources, we got bridges over them. And especially, you know, a tanker truck turns over, contaminates one of your water sources. Um, anything could happen. We have to do all kinds of vulnerability assessments. So we could use water from either one of our sources. So it's really paid off to have an alternate water source. But also it's gaining developable land. It's opened up more territory. Uh, more places that can be developed to have growth and because if you're stifled to grow we've got an incurring cost we see inflationary costs creeping in right now so as that inflationary cost it'd be really nice to have growth throughout your district to compensate for that for that offset in, in that inflationary cost so that's a lot of reasons why we're in there's, and there's probably many others uh, but I think those are some of the really key ones. Uh, following up on that, <clears throat> with, with that bond and indebtedness for extending the uh, service into Union County, uh, how is that offset by the number of subscribers of Union County and how much that falls on the people in Knox County? You know, I know that might be all part, but I think that's really what Kermit's question probably is happening. Yeah, I mean, I think I just, you know, I'll be quite honest, I don't know the exact numbers of that. Uh, I'd have to do some math on how that breaks out. Um, what we see basically, like I said, in the engineering reports and studies, you've seen the plans. Uh, when you're pumping basically water from one end of the district all the way across the other one, I'm talking just the halls, we weren't getting, you know, we were having a lot of problems. This plant, this, this water source solved a huge amount of problems. This water comes all the way in the halls. There's more people in halls using this water than in Union County, guys. It's, uh, we serve, like I said, all that stuff around Majors Road, Salem Church, all those subdivisions up in that zone. And we're looking at basically bringing that water even further into halls. So we're changing the water quality, we're changing the zoning, we're changing bringing more water to try to figure out better ways to serve our communities from both water sources. Uh, I'm gonna, if it's okay with the person ask the question, I'm gonna ask you to rephrase this because there's gonna be a wide variation. But what's the average pay for all the power employees? Um, and, and it's gonna, there's gonna be a huge, you know, variety. So I, I think, um, is, is that information public record? Yes. Okay, it is public Yes. Um, and how do your, how does your overall payroll, number of employees, and average uh, payroll per position and pay per employee line up with the surrounding utilities? Okay. You know, and on, a, on a periodic basis, we look at other utilities around the uh, local area, and we also look at American Water Works Association uh, surveys that are done across the America. And so we look at those and we set and compare so from top to bottom, you know, we're right in line with all the other utilities, especially the large utilities. Uh, so you've got three of the largest utility districts here in, in Knox County, so First, West, and us. And so we compare really, really well. Uh, I would think that that average would probably, I don't know, 50,000 50, maybe. Uh, but we're losing employees, folks. I mean, you got KUB down here hiring starting laborers Starting laborers over $18 an hour. Because I've lost three or four guys to, to KUB. Our starting laborers anywhere from $10, 11 12 $13 an hour, depending on their experience and things of that nature. Um, so we, we range all the way up and down the board. We've got different ranges of different salaries. Where, uh, where can people look up uh, you know, the, the salaries? Uh, well, there's not a public place to look it up. You can come to us at Tell Us What You Want, and uh, we'll, we'll produce that information. And I've produced it multiple times. Uh, most everybody here should know what I make. I mean, that's been in the paper. I mean, I make $160,000, right over $160,000. I am a licensed engineer. I've got a degree from the University of Tennessee uh, and a license from the state of Tennessee. I own a grade two distribution and grade two collection system. I spent numerous hours 
out in the field. Field operations is where I, where I grew up. It's what I've done. I know how to run systems. Uh, and I know a lot about utilities. I've been doing it for over 23 years. Um, and so we rank really well. I rank in the bottom of the top of everybody in the, uh, the, big, the big ones in the area from KUB down. So, uh, but yeah, if anybody wants information, uh, just come by and we'll, we'll try to see what you need and we'll help you out. And you talked about a, a number of things. This is a really good question. Uh, what are some habits that can help at home to help conserve our water and get money over? Uh, so some things, one thing I would suggest, uh, you can go to the EPA website and it's called Water Sense. And I believe there might be a link from our website to Water Sense. Um, but low flow uh, fixtures, shower heads, things of that nature. Uh, I've talked to customers that have rain barrels, so if you've got plants and things of that nature, or uh, water that you can collect rainwater, uh, you can water those plants, you can water other things with. I've got some uh, folks I've talked to over the years about that. Uh, washing larger loads of clothes, um, dishwasher, filling it up, all these things when you're washing dishes in the sink, don't let the water run. You know, I had one customer in, in my office here not long ago. She goes, I am not going, I'm going to let that water run. So when she washed her dishes, she's going to let that water run. She feels like it was cleaner. Hey, that's just a habit. It's what people do. Like I said, when I shave, I let the water run, and, and then I let the water run through the ranger. These two are, again, somewhat related, so I'll read them uh, both. But how can small businesses in a small community that's taken five to ten percent per year over the next ten years uh, when the bills are already one hundred and fifty two dollars a month? Uh, the second question is a hotel owner um, whose uh, who's, uh, bill is uh, almost as much with half as many occupied rooms as it was before, and then that bill is extremely high, it's almost as much as, as their mortgage. Yeah, we would, we would love to come out and look at the uh, look at those units because uh, we've done that. Uh, we've looked at different hotels, making sure uh, there's not some kind of issue going on. Watching the meter, making sure there's nobody using water when the meter's running. Uh, so we go out and troubleshoot that. Uh, you know, as far as the increases, we yeah we understand it. We do get it. I know we probably don't feel like it, um, but like I said, I think trying to to let you know why the rates are going where they're going and what, why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, if you were able to be out here each and every day with us, it would really, you, you could see it. You could see what we see and you could see the problems. And like the folks on Collier Road, they've seen the problems firsthand and they were getting tired. So you imagine that's, that's over, that's about once a month or better, they were losing service. Um, so issues like Collier Road and those things, trying to get those things remedied. And the meat compliance, she was talking about unaccounted the water wall survey. Uh, why did HBUD install sewer lines illegally and why do we have to pay to do that? Well, I don't know about illegally. I mean, if that was done, that uh, you gotta understand, I've, I've only been the general manager for since 2008. Uh, so if there was any illegal procedures done, I'm not aware of it, or if it happened on a different watch. So, um, so if it was illegal, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to fix those things. Uh, somebody's probably called in about them and said you need to fix them. And, uh, just like the sewer overflows, they're illegal too. Because if you look at the Clean Water Act, there's a little phrase in the Clean Water Drinking Act that says uh, overflows or prohibited. So those are illegal. So we're breaking the law right now. Um, so if we got things that need to be fixed, you know, hey, give me a call and I'll come out and take a look and try to fix it if there's something put in not to ride really. Uh, and I think this, this is a great question and that's the root of uh, a lot of this. Is my problem is not the weight, but the volume. Um, the volume, I'm summarizing today, but the volume can be more bills than possible. We don't have enough room to tell my whole story here. But the volume is just way too much uh, for, uh, for the homeowner. At the volume, uh, I'm trying to follow that question a little bit. It's not the race that is the problem because uh, the race are you look at mine, but how much water, again, it goes back to how much water people are, are we're saying that they're using. Yeah. 
Right. Saying that you're using it. Yeah. So, you know, like I said again, I mean, that, that is a really hard, I know people try to compare themselves to another poor person family from this home to this home and from this utility and that utility. It, it's very difficult to do that. I know you, you know, we think, hey, it should be the same. It should be within this or that. Um, and those are really tough ones for us to analyze and look at, I'll just be honest. And when you start talking about why people's volumes are differing across from your neighbor across the street that has four persons and I got four persons. Um, you know, like I said, I know a four person family uh, and they wash double wash clothes and push the button to put extra water in them in the washer, in the clothes washer, because you don't think they're clean enough. And they use about 10 to, 10 to 12 thousand gallons a month. Well, my family uses a four. I got two teenagers living in my house. I use about 4,900 gallons to 5,000 gallons a month. But see, I'm more diligent, you know, and my wife washes large loads of clothes, and she just different. Habits are different. And, and that, I know, is a really hard one to understand, and you're probably going to walk away. And I don't, you know, I don't know that I believe all that. But that is a really tough one. But we will try our best to try to come out and figure out if there's various differences and something going on. Have you met with these other utilities? Have you met with any consultants uh, who can offer guidance on how to operate more efficiently? Yes, we have. Uh, we looked at more this. We looked at. We talked to our peer utilities. I was actually meeting with them uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to say we operate very efficiently. Um, now, I know a lot of people probably don't want to believe that. Um, but we talk to these other utilities. We compare notes. We look at how how we operate and how they operate. Um, so, yes, we, we look at that. We have consulting engineers that work all across the different utilities and all across the different states. And so they come in and analyze the system. Uh, how do you think we got to where we got to? What, based on my opinion, it was based on engineering principles that, hey, you've got problems and you've got to fix them. What is the salary increase presented to us with board of directors with that school? Uh, well, there's not really a salary increase. They don't get a salary. They, get, uh, they meet 12 times a year. And they, uh, the state, this is also state regulated. They make three hundred fifty dollars a meeting. Um, now I think that may have changed back in uh, when when they managed the then the uh, early maybe early two thousands that changed. Um, but three hundred fifty dollars a meeting is all all they get. Uh, there are by state by state law the only benefits that the board is eligible to get are health care, same as the employees would. It was my understanding that rates were raised many uh, over decades back to bring maintenance up to date on the pipes that have been maintained. Rates started climbing fast about 15 years ago with the same rationale, and now we're being told the rates must to rise again. Uh, where does all the past money go? Well, we we look at we look at rates all the way back to 1954. Uh, there was years where they there was many years they didn't have rate increases. I've got a table and a chart of that if anybody wants to see it. Uh, so there's many years there went rate increases. Uh, there were so a lot of years they did maybe a 3% rate increase or a 4 um, So when the, you know, those rates didn't really generate a lot. But when you look at the, the index, you know, so when we first started really looking at studying rates and where rates went, and I keep you know, I've been here for, like I said, since 2000, so I've seen some of this that wasn't directly responsible, but I've seen a lot of the principles that went in place, so they used the outside uh, consultants and, and model rate modeling to project that. So, so those earlier rates weren't keeping up. They were very small, too, so when you talk about 2 or 3% uh, on very small dollars, uh, but there was there was three or four years there that were very substantial rate increases. Uh, they were very high, and there was a lot of work that went on, a lot of things that went on during that time. Uh, one thing we've tried to do is be really modest with that. I'm just I've inherited this stuff, you know. So I'm, you know, kind of a generational change, you know, uh, 
taking on things that have been inherited and trying to fix them and trying to put a plan in place that's very moderate that can get us to the finish line and goal for our future and for our kids and grandkids. Clean up those sewer overflows, fixing water leaks and all those things. This goes right along with that, this last question, and it's kind of a doozy. Um, what are the projected rate increases per year over the next 10 years? So we published uh, sewer rate increases. Uh, we've uh, put those in the newsletters. We've put them on our website. Uh, so we haven't held that to any secret out there. Uh, so the last few years since we started to consent order, the sewer rate increases have been 6%. Uh, we're projected to for another uh, year or two of 6% and then it drops to 4% uh, 4 over, over the next uh, few years going forward. With water being around an average of about 3%, so on a combined bill, you're looking at an average of about 4%, 4 4.5% uh, change in rates. Now, what we're going we're gonna to constantly continue to look at our projects. So, so if we're able to achieve more with some of these projects than what we initially uh, projected, and you, your I&I &I gets taken care of, your sewer overflows, you know, that's going to that's gonna shift and be analyzed right back into the uh, end rates. And so, you know, rates are driving this. Remember, right, we don't get anything, any money from any other agencies. Um, so when these agencies come and tell us to fix and do and get our water losses down and to have high quality water and to, I don't want sewer spilled in my yard, uh, these are all real things. And when folks, we got to, we got to fix them. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, I think we're the generational change that you know pay the piper to, to for our future of our kids and grandkids. That was the last question. I appreciate everybody being here tonight. Thank you all so much. Thank you, and everyone else. As I said, Mr. Cardwell uh, will stay and answer one-on-one -on -one questions. Uh, do me a favor and go on all ones. Thanks everybody, have a safe trip home, thank you.